Okay, hello everyone. So this is week three, and uh, this week's topic is another data structures, uh, which are the stakes, stacks, and queues. So let's get started. So today's outline plan is first I will talk about the access to the elements. What kind of access do we have? Second, then we I will talk about the stacks, then goes queues, and the last is the problems that can be solved by using stacks or queues. So, first of all is access to the elements. Um, before, on the uh, second week, I'll talk about the array and linked list. And array is a random ac access data structure, which means that uh, each element can be accessed directly and in constant time. And as example of array, uh, I can say that uh, if we take a book, in a book each page can be opened independently, independently of others. All we need is just the index. That's why is, uh, array is a random access. It's independent uh, from others in, order, in term of the accessing uh, element. And next is a linked list. Linked list is a sequential access data. Why sequential? Because in order to get one element, you need to go through other elements. Uh, and uh, each element can be accessed only in particular order. As so, an example of sequential access is a roll of paper. And uh, in, order, in, all, in roll of paper, all prior, prior material must be unrolled in order to get to data you want. And next, uh, type of access to the elements is limited. Um, why limited? Because in order to get some elements, you need to remove all other elements. And uh, stacks, stack and queue are the data structures which have limited access. So first, let's start with the stack. Stack is a data structure which uses last in, first out ordering. Um, here is the uh, illustrations of the stack. On the left picture, you see that there is a um, stones, and in the stones, each stone is uh, on the top of other. And uh, if, for example, we need to take this element without crushing others, we need to remove this one, this stone, this stone, and this stone. After that, only we can, we can get access to this stone. Um, and uh, on the right side, you see that uh, we have uh, illustration, the drawing of stack, and uh, you see that um, we have the top of the data structure with the two, and uh, in order to get six, in order to get access to the six, we need to remove two, we need to remove nine, and after that only uh, we get sec we got six. Uh, as you can see, um, the elements are limited in terms of accessing because um, we need to do some operations uh, which are dependent on other elements and after that only we can get access to, to this element that, that we want. That's why it's a, a limited access data structure. So uh, what is a stack to be precisely? A stack is a container of objects that are inserted and removed according to the last in first out the principle. Um, in a push down stacks on the stacks on the two operations are allowed. First is a push. Push uh, we insert element uh, into the stack and pop uh, we get out the elements out of the stack. Um, and also um, at stack we can only add and remove elements uh, from the top of the stack and um, when we insert element we add on the top and when we remove which is pop we also re uh, remove element from the top of the data structure also stack is a recursive data structure uh, why recursive because um, for example when you call too many recursions um, behind the scenes the programming language that you use, uh, use uh, stack as a data structure where it 
uh, holds all the calls of recursion. And um, when we have too many calls, um, we can have stock stack overflow. And here is a structural definition of a stack. Stack is a, is a empty or it consists of top and the rest, which is a stack. And here is the time complexity. So as you can see, um, access to, uh, to the stack takes linear time. Because first of all, it's um, uh, limited access data structure, and uh, in order to get uh, all other some target elements, we need to remove all the ele elements which are on the top of that. And also, um, we have a search because um, there is because we have very limited access to the stack. The time complexity of search takes linear time. And uh, insertion and deletion takes constant time, uh, time complexity um, because we just only put element on the, on the top or remove on the top, and that's it. Um, that's why it always takes same amount of time uh, whenever we do insertion or deletion. And here are the operations of the stack. First. Uh, operation is empty, it just checks do you have some elements or not and uh, it takes checks is the top equal to zero if it is equal it uh, returns true in all other cases it returns false it means that um, we our stack consists some of elements then we have push um, as I said push we just put elements on the top of the stack so we uh, set this as S top, S top, S top plus one. So we add one more element. And then we say that S top is equal to the sum X element. Then pop. Um, in a pop, we just check. First of all, before, when we remove element, we need to check is our stack consists of some elements or not. So that's why we do if stack empty, if stock stack empty so it means that we don't have any elements it shows error under flow on in all other cases we remove uh, our element from the top of our stack by doing uh, minus one subtraction one and then return the top element all these elements um, takes constant time complexity because whenever the size of the uh, stack it always takes same amount of time and here is the illustration of the stack so let's say that we have here empty stack and we add one element and top is uh, and two is on the top of our stack then we add five and uh, the top of our of our stack is five then we add seven we have push then we add one uh, then on the next step, when we remove, we remove from the uh, top of the our stack, which is a one. Then uh, our top top element becomes seven. Then we again do, um, we, then we again do do push, uh, and uh, we are pushing twenty one one, and twenty one becomes our top element. Then um, on the next step, we remove twenty one. Then seven again becomes top. Then again we do pop, and our top element becomes five. Then we remove five, and our top element becomes two. And here is the applications of a stack. Um, it means that where can we use stack, uh, and where it's necessary to use stack. Um, the simplest application of the stack is to reverse a word. We push a given word into the stack, letter by letter, and then pop the letter from the stack. And after that, we get we can get the reversed version of a word, because uh, we start from the back of the word. We start from the last letters, and when we again build the uh, string from the stack, we get we got the reverse word. Then next example where we can use a stack is uh, uh, for example, 
be the Microsoft Word or all other um, text editors. I guess you already used it many times, not only in a text editors, uh, but um, on almost any uh, software. And um, <clears throat> uh, in all that software, we have undo uh, mechanism tool where we remove the last um, the last action that we have done. And um, for that kind of um, for that kind of operations, stack is the best data structure to use. Also, um, for example, who uses Android smartphones? As you can see, for example, when you press on a button to allow all the used applications last time, you see the applications which are used in the principle of last in, first out. Um, and um, when you, for example, press ba button back, um, it moves to the place which, which was uh, before the last action. And uh, uh, for all that kind of um, mechanisms, tools, stack is the best data structure. The next example as a um, application of the stack is a backtracking. For example, let's say that you have a maze here, and in the maze you're starting from this position, and you need to reach this exit. And uh, when you go through this maze, uh, you, for example, can go in totally wrong direction. Uh, let's say that you are uh, moving in this direction and come here. Uh, what you do, you see that there is um, no other way, like it's a dead end. So what do you do? So you go back and you try other, other directions. And when you reach some dead end, uh, you need to go back. And for, for this all cases, you're moving to previous point where, where you have reached. And um, this is where you need to use the stack. Uh, so it's kind of you're going to previous checkpoint choice point or checkpoint um, and for this kind of moves uh, stack is also a good choice to use as a data structure also um, next is the uh, implementation um, you know stack is a special kind of data structure where it's built on the top of other data structures, so uh, you can you can build stack with using array, with using vector, with using array list or linked list or any other collection. So uh, if you use right data structure and if you use right methods uh, techniques, you can build from that uh, a stack. And also, uh, regardless the type of uh, underlying data structure, the stack must implement the same functionality. It means that push should be always on the top uh, of the data structure, and the remove also should be on the, from the top of the of the data structure. So if you use array, you can uh, you can use array and you can use push and pop, but the push pop should be uh, should do um, should have access only to the top of the data structure. Same applies for all other uh, data structures. So here is a uh, array-based implementation and the linked list-based implementation. So as you can see here, um, we first created array with a defined size, and we say that it is. Let's say that. Uh, the size of our stack is five, and uh, when we add elements, we put elements from the left to the right, and um, the last element on our array is also top in our stack. So here we see the three, the element with index three is um, our top element because it's last one. And next is a linked list based implementation. Uh, it means that. We use linked list is under uh, is under our stack, and uh, here, as you can see, when we add elements, we add elements not to the end of our linked list, but on the beginning of our linked list. 
So we have here we have the uh, head of linked list, which is also the top of our stack. And uh, when whenever when you use when when you want to uh, use linked list for to implement the stack, you need to remove all the elements. For example, let's say that you want to get these elements, you need to follow the rule of the stack. And in the stack, in order to get some elements, you need to remove that element from the stack. That's why you need to remove this element, this element, and after that only you can get that this our target element. Even though that linked list allows us to get some element without removing, but if you use linked list in order to implement stack, you need to remove all the previous elements. And here is uh, how you can uh, call the already built-in data stack in a Java. You just declare the type of uh, data structures that you want to use. Then you give the name. And uh, in a Java, you have this kind of methods. So first one is empty. Empty just checks uh, is the stack empty or not. Then we have peak. Um, it just looks at the top of our stack without removing the, our top element then we have remove uh, then we have pop which removes the uh, top element from our stack and returns the object as a value of this function then we have a push it push means that we put our ele um, element into the top of our stack so here is the stack in a python in a python um, you can use list as a um, way to replace the stack. And um, here are the methods of the stack. Like you append, add item to the top of the stack, and pop, you remove, and also retrieve the item from the top position of our stack. Here is a stack in C++. Uh, here you de declare stack with the type of integer and call it st. So this is the name of our data structure of our stack. And uh, in C++ you can use next methods. It's empty returns whether the stack is empty. Size returns the size of our stack. Top re returns the reference to the topmost element of our stack. Push adds elements g, which is push g, uh, on the top of our stack. And pop deletes the topmost element uh, from the stack. So uh, this is a three examples of how to use stack in a Java, in a Python, and C++. So if you use any other languages, please um, take a look. Um, if you, for example, Java, JavaScript, please uh, refer to the document, document to the some uh, documents which can provide the example of stack in a JavaScript. And next data structure is a queue. Uh, queue works in a principle of first in, first out ordering. So uh, as is, um, I can explain the queue as a line, for example, for some cashier. The first person who comes to the cashier uh, is going to be served uh, earlier than others. Uh, and uh, by the way, this image was drawn before the pandemic. Uh, but due to the pandemic, guys, please don't do like these people in, in this image. Uh, first of all, wear the mask and follow the social distancing with a um, distance at least one and a half meters. Don't do like them. So Q um, works in next, as a next example. So when we, when we insert the element, we put element to the back of our um, data structure. So we have Insert called NQ, which means we insert elements. So we put element on the back of our data structure. 
and uh, when we want to remove the elements we can only remove element from the front side of of Q and also when we want to get elements um, we need to move from the front to the back so uh, we need to remove from this side uh, for example let's say that we want to get this element we remove this element then this element and after that only we can get the access to this element here is the time complexity so as you can see the time complexity of Q is uh, same as uh, stacks it has a linear time complexity access because it's limited uh, access data type uh, it also same applies for the search uh, because all the elements depends on all the elements that were, were before that some elements then we have insertion and deletion on insertion and deletion also takes constant time complexity because when we for example want to add element we just take element and put on the back of the of the queue and deletes uh, we just take element from the front side and delete it and here is the operations of the queue first one is nq um, nq means that we insert element our queue so first of all we take the tail um, we say that um, the tail element is equal to our x and the if tail is equal to our length of uh, our q we say that tail is equal to the one in all other cases we add one more um, one more ele element then um, here is the deck the q uh, when we want to remove <clears throat> we take the head of the our q and if the head is equal to our lens, uh, we say that head is equal to the one. In all other cases, we just um, move element to the back. So we do uh, one plus one to the head and ju just return X. Uh, also, as you can see, the time complexity of these elements takes off N. So same amount of time for both operations. Next is uh, applications. So where we can use Q. First one is uh, in a CPU scheduling. So in CPU scheduling, each task uh, are served in term of the first in first hour orderings. And the next is, uh, uh, for example, when we want to use create this software where we want to uh, provide the line for the people at the ticket window we can use q as our data structure and uh, also um, at web server for web servers as apache and g and nginx each request um, are served as a first in first out ordering and um, the implementation of q is kind of similar to the stack and um, the queue is also adapter class, meaning that the queue is also on the top of other data structures. So we need, in order to implement queue, we, we use same, we can use array, we can use vector, we can use array list, we can use linked list or any other collection. And the same, uh, same principle applies for the, in term of um, implementation for the queue. So regardless of the type of uh, under, the underlying data structure, a queue must be must implement the same functionality. Um, so, whenever you want to use array, vector, array list, or link or linked list, um, in the, when you want to add elements, the add, the element should be added at the back of our data structure. And uh, whenever you want to access elements or remove elements. Uh, you need to remove that element from the front side of of the data structure. And here is the queue in Java. Um, so as you can see, uh, queue in a Java implemented as a linked list. So you first define the queue as a type of integer called queue, 
and um, here you have the methods first one is you add add element to the queue then remove remove the head of the queue pick uh, you as I said before you have access to the only head of the queue uh, is empty you check is the queue empty or not and size just return the size of the queue in a Python uh, in a Python queue implement as a double ended queue so it means that um, in a Python you have access not only to the beginning of your of the queue but also to the back of the queue so you can it means that um, it is a it's called deck so what is a deck deck is a double double ended queue it means that you can insert element from to the back of the um, queue you can add element to the front of the queue and also you have access to the both sides so you can add element from the bottom from the uh, back or from the uh, front side of the queue and um, as, uh, that the time complexity of that uh, operation state constant time complexity and uh, it consists of the here are the two main methods of course the deck in the python has much more methods but here are the two main appends which add an item to the top of the queue and pop left which is remove and retrieve item from the top position of the queue so here are the queue in C++ you just define the queue as a type of integer and called the uh, G and it has four main methods first one is empty return whether is the queue is empty or not size uh, just returns the size of the queue it uh, returns the integer then front returns a reference to the first element of the queue and push uh, add the element so here should be G add the element G at the end of the queue so next is a um, valid parenthesis this is a problem regarding to the stacks and queues so let's say that we have some string containing of next characters so we have three type of brackets this first type second type and third type uh, you need to write a function which checks whether input is valid or not uh, and uh, in order to be valid it should follow these rules first rule is a uh, open brackets must be closed by the same type of type of brackets and second open brackets must be closed in the correct order so here is the example first uh, this should be output as of true because uh, the ordering of the parentheses of the brackets is correct. It has opening bracket and closing bracket. Next, it's also true because first it ad added this type of bracket, then it closed, then it opened another type of bracket, and also it was closed. That's why the output is true. This one is false because it first opened with a one type of bracket, and then it was closed by a different type of bracket. Uh, that's why it's false. Here, as you can see, it's all also false. Why? Because first we open the bracket with this type of um, bracket, then we open other type of brackets. So then we have closing bracket. But in order to close this one, we need to close this bracket. So uh, that's why it's false. But if, for example, uh, in the input number four, if we would have something like this. It would be true because first we use this type of bracket, then use to this type, then we close this type of brackets, and we uh, use the same type type of closing brackets for these brackets. So here is uh, also before uh, solving this problem, uh, please press pause and think how you could use this how you could solve this problem and here is the solution in order to solve this problem you can use stack to store the opening brackets so you just 
go from the left to the right, reading each character one by one, and whenever you meet the opening bracket, you put that bracket into the stack. And uh, every time when we meet the closing bracket, we get the element from the top of our stack. If the, um, if the type of the brackets are the same, uh, we can keep going to re read next characters. Uh, but if the type of the brackets are the difference, it means that uh, the whole input is in incorrect and th that's why we can return false. So here is the explanation, what do we do? So here is a graphical explanation. So this one is our stack. And uh, this one is our string uh, when, where we need to check our um, uh, brackets for the uh, its uh, correct order. So first we start with the opening bracket and we put it into, into our stack. Then we have this one. So we put again to our top of our element, then comes this one, we also put. Then we have closing bracket. So we take the top element from our stack, which is this one, and we compare the type of the brackets. And we see that the type of brackets are the same, so we just remove this one from our um, stack. Then we come to this element, we see this opening bracket, and put into our stack. So then on the next, uh, let's say that we have here this kind of bracket, then we see this, uh, this closing bracket, and again we go to the stack and check the top, and we see again that the top and the closing brackets are the same, so we remove this element, then we come to this uh, bracket, and uh, when we come to this bracket, we again take the top, which is this one, and we see that they're same, so we remove this one, and come to the next one. On the next, we again have closing bracket, so we compare the element which are on the top of our stack, this one and this one. We see that they are um, same type, so we remove this one. Then we come to this one, we put our, uh, our opening bracket to our stack. Then we come to this. We see again that on the top of our stack we have same type of brackets, then we remove them. And then we come to this one and we also check and we see that the, they have the same type of brackets. And here is the implementation of the solution. It's on the C++, we have here stack, then we take each element one by one, and if it is opening, so it's one of these three type of brackets, we put into our stack, then in all other cases, we first check if it is not, if it is not empty. Um, then we start to check our top element on the stack in our current closing brackets. If they are not same, we return false. And if the, our stack is not empty, it also returns false. And in the end, we just return, uh, is our stack empty or not? It means that, for example, we can have uh, some opening brackets left. And it means that for that opening brackets, uh, we don't have some closing brackets. So it also means invalid. That's why we just return uh, as our stack is empty or not. So that's it for today and um, readings for this lecture is uh, our book Introduction to Algorithms, Corman, Leserson, Rives and Shamir uh, and the chapter is 10.1, please read this chapter. So here is the summary. Um, we have three access to the elements so far. First one is a random access, um, which is array. So in array, uh, all you need is just index to the element, and you can independently get any element uh, from the array. Then you have sequential, which is linked linked list. In a linked list, you go one by one in order to get some element. And limited, 
uh, in limited you need to remove one element in order to get other then we have stack stack implemented as a principle of last in first out and um, it it can be implemented through with using array or linked list or and the last one is a queue queue is implemented as a principle of first in first out and it also can be uh, implemented by using array or linked list so that's it for today thank you for the watching um, bye